All right, good morning, um, everyone, those that are on the conference call, and certainly those that also that are viewing uh, through our um, live stream, uh, through our website and our Facebook page. And so this morning is our, um, our Bible study, and uh, so we're going to go over uh, last week's uh, lesson as far as the assignment. Uh, there were a couple things that I gave uh, you all to, um, to research during the week as your assignment for Bible study. And then we'll go into uh, today's lesson. I'm going to touch on a few things. And then we'll, we'll conclude around about um, 10.30, 5.00, we'll, we'll conclude. And then I'll give you a new assignment for this week. But let us pray. Uh, Eternal God, we thank you for this day that you have given unto us. And God, we thank you for this moment that we share together in your word. And Lord, I pray that you'll continue to touch us as we continue to glorify you in all things. Bless this moment that we share together. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, so let's look at last week's assignment, um, and then we'll, um, we'll move into uh, our study today. So last week I had asked, uh, we were dealing with the book of uh, Ezekiel, uh, the prophet Ezekiel. And so what I've asked, uh, the assignment was to do, a re do your research and to um, look up um, and you can do it scripturally in the Bible. Uh, and I think I gave a hint, uh, Ezekiel 1 through chapter 1 through chapter 3 gave you some information about the, uh, the prophet. And then you can do your research through um, Google and there's some websites you could have gone on to, to do research on um, Ezekiel. And so, uh, um, so the question was, who was Ezekiel? And, um, and so there's a couple of things that I want to make sure you have. So we have um, Ezekiel being one of the prophets. So Ezekiel was one of the major uh, prophets. Um, you also want to note that in the book of Ezekiel, uh, there are uh, 48 uh, chapters uh, of writings. Um, and these are prophecies and, um, that, that, that Ezekiel have written um, and have spoken uh, from the Lord. Uh, and then the other thing that I want you to note uh, is that uh, the, the prophet had, um, a, he was a prophet of vision, all right? And so I want to take a, a, a second, and if you go to uh, your Bible, to the book of uh, Ezekiel real quick, and I want to just show, highlight a couple of things um, so that you can uh, see what I mean by, by that. By that, he was a, um, a prophet of vision, Right. So if you look at Ezekiel chapter one, Ezekiel chapter one, and starting at um, at verse one. All right. So Ezekiel chapter one, starting at verse one, it says, um, uh, "In the thirteenth year." In the fourth month of the fifth day, while I was among the exile by uh, Kabar River, the heavens were opened, and I saw visions of God. Okay? And then that whole chapter, he begins to talk about what the Lord had shown him. Okay? That's, that's vision one. Um, and this is, continue, this is what we call the vision of the cherubims. Okay? Because it's... it's it's a heavenly uh, vision that he's uh, that he's seeing, and that goes all the way to chapter two, um, chapter two, where again um, he goes and and he said to me, "Son of man, stand up on your feet, and I will speak to you." And as he spoke, the spirit came unto him and raised my raised me to my feet, and I heard him speak to me. All right. Um, let me give you another example from there, uh, chapter, then we move to chapter 8, starting at verse 1, okay, that talks about uh, idolatry in the temple, chapter 9 talks about um, um, the idolaters killed. Um, chapter 10 talks about the glory departing from the temple. Okay, these are all the visions that he's getting. So this is the visions of, uh, of the glory um, of God. All right, God's glory 
being demonstrated to the people and then God's glory being taken away um, as well. All right. And then the last, uh, the next vision is chapter 15. It's kind of kind of going through the Bible with you, showing the visions. Okay. So you got Ezekiel chapter 15, uh, where again it says, um, verse 1, the Lord, the word of the Lord came to me, son of man, how is uh, the wood of, um, of a vine better than that of a branch uh, on any of the trees in the forest? So again, this is just an example of uh, this vision um, of, the, uh, of the burning vine. Okay, so again, these are the visions that, are, that Ezekiel is experiencing. And then the last one, of course, is the famous one that everybody has heard this story, uh, the vision of uh, the dry bones, right? And so he says, the hand of the Lord was upon me. Uh, this is Ezekiel chapter 37. The hand of the Lord was upon me and brought me out of the spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full uh, of dry bones. And so here again uh, is a, uh, uh, another uh, vision that uh, the prophet Ezekiel uh, was, was given. So I just wanted to highlight those, um, those few things there um, when it came to knowing something about Ezekiel. And I'm sure many of you have, um, have uh, researched some other things as well. Now the other part of the assignment was to list the names of the tribes. Okay, we've done this before in Bible study, um, probably last year. Uh, we went through the, uh, the the Israelites and all the twelve tribes of Israel, and so. But here again, uh, we want to highlight that, and this is going to be also useful for our study this morning. And so, I wanted to start with because I know we've always heard um, the God of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so, we look at Abraham, um, which is one of the fathers, um, and his wife Sarah, and they had Isaac. Isaac and Rebecca uh, had uh, Jacob, and uh, and Jacob um, had one, two, three, four uh, women uh, wives that he uh, that he had actually children with, and so uh, Jacob had uh, four women with kids, and then there was one uh, Dinah that we've all heard about. Uh, she was uh, another one, uh, but she didn't have any kids with uh, with Jacob. So we look at. Um, Leah, and so Leah uh, uh, with Jacob had Reuben, had uh, Simeon, had Levi, Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun. Okay, and so under Jacob again, Leah had uh, six uh, sons: Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah. Issachar and Zebulun. Then he had uh, two uh, uh, kids with um, uh, Zipha, and Zipha she, he had Gad and uh, Ashar. All right, so Gad and Ashar with Zipha, and then um, with Bila he had Dan and Naphtali. All right, so I've named about 10 already. And then the last uh, one uh, was Rachel. And with Rachel, uh, there was Joseph and there was Benjamin. Okay, so those are the, the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, I want to also note on the Joseph, again, we talked about this last week, that uh, he had two sons, uh, Ephraim and uh, Manasseh. And Ephraim and Manasseh were considered uh, part of the priesthood because of their mother's uh, father, which is their grandfather. Uh, he was a priest, uh, Potiphar. All right, so Potiphar, because he was a priest, they came under the lineage of the priesthood, and uh, so Joseph is considered uh, part of that priesthood along with Levi. And so one of the things I've asked you to do after you listed and you research your 12 tribes, uh, then to pick one tribe and to do more further research on that tribe. So you're supposed to pick a tribe and then do some more research on that tribe to figure out um, some information about uh, that tribe. So, uh, for example, Levi, uh, one of the, the, Levi, the Levites were responsible for assisting um, 
the priests and, and some of them were, were priests in the temple with all the rituals and the sacraments and stuff and so uh, and sacrifices rather and so they were uh, responsible uh, for that responsible for the worship piece in the temple as well okay all right so that that was the assignment from last week um, to to sketch that out when we dealt with Ezekiel now let's look at this week's this morning we're in the book of Isaiah the book of Isaiah And chapter 49, I'm going to read from the NIV, and there's 10 verses, and then there is, uh, I mean, verses 1 through 10, and then there's verse uh, 22, all right? So again, we have the book of Isaiah, and Isaiah is another prophet, another major prophet, um, and Isaiah is really known for um, the uh, prophetic uh, word of God, but mostly dealing with Christ, the coming of the Messiah, you hear a lot of the that talk of Christ um, in uh, uh, in Isaiah, even though Christ has not come yet. But there's this there's this hope that uh, that Isaiah gives from the Lord um, that helps the people that uh, in order for them to be delivered, there is a deliverer that's going to come. All right, so you hear a lot of that in the book of Isaiah. All right, Isaiah 49, starting at verse one, it says, "Listen to me, you islands." Hear this, you distant nations. Before I was born, before I was born, the Lord called me. From the from my birth, He has made mention of my name. He made my mouth like a sharpened sword. In shadow of His hand, He hide me. He made me into a polished arrow and concealed me in His quiver. He said to me, "You are my servant." Uh, Israel, in whom I will display my splendor. But I said, I have labored to no purpose. I have spent my strength in vain and for nothing. Yet what is due me in the, in the Lord's hand, and my reward is with God, is with my God. And now the Lord says, he who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and gather Israel to himself, for I am honored in the eyes of the Lord, and my God has been my strength, he says. It is too small a thing for you to be my servant, to restore the tribes of Jacob, and bring back those of Israel I have kept. I will also make you a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring my salvation to the end, ends of the earth. This is what the Lord says, the Redeemer and the Holy One of Israel. To him who was despised and harbored the, by the nations, to the servants of rulers, kings will see you and rise up. Princesses will see you and bow down. Because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. This is what the Lord says, in the time of my favor, I will answer you, and in the day of salvation I will help you. I will keep you and will make you to be a covenant for the people, to restore the land and to reassign its desolate inheritance, to say to the captives, come out, and to those in darkness, be free. They will feed beside the roads and find pasture on every barn hill. They will neither hunger nor thirst, nor will the desert heat or the sun beat upon them. He who has compassion on them will guide them and lead them beside springs of water. Now let's uh, go down to verse 22. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. See, I will beckon to the Gentiles. I will lift up my banner to the peoples. They will bring your sons in their arms and carry your daughters on their shoulders. And God bless the hearing of God's holy word. So the lesson today is on um, a light form of the Gentiles. Um, so the question I've been raised around this Bible study is, what does it mean to be a light uh, for the Gentiles? Okay, so the title is A Light for the Gentiles, but we want to look at 
what does that really mean? What does it mean to be uh, a light uh, for uh, for the Gentiles? So one of the things like I always like to do is to uh, give a definition. Let's give a definition of what is a Gentile, and let's give a definition of light. Okay, let's start with a Gentile. And so we look up the uh, the word Gentile. It'll, it'll say a person uh, who is not Jewish. All right. Uh, uh, the Hebrew word uh, goy, which is G-O-Y, goy, uh, means a nation and applies to uh, Hebrews in any other nation, all right? And so when you talk about Gentiles, you're talking about any other nation, all nations uh, except uh, the Jews, all right? Um, and so there's always this conversion of being converted from Gentile to Jew or from Gentile to what we call now Christianity. All right. Then there's a definition of light. And so a definition of light would be a natural agent that stimulates sight and makes uh, things visible. And so we, we know it, 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 light illuminates. And, and we all know that uh, by way of when it gets dark at night, when it turns evening, we rely on street lights to, to, to come on so that we can see, as we, those of us that are tra traveling at night, uh, that we can see the road. And particularly when you can't see too well, you're relying on those uh, street lights uh, to, to illuminate um, the, the, uh, the roads so that you can see your way home, right? Uh, and so, uh, so light is important. So in that regard, uh, we need light, not in light. It doesn't make sense to have light in light, right? It doesn't make sense to have, um, you know, uh, if I look out the window right now, it doesn't make sense to have our parking lights on in the daytime. It, it doesn't, it, it's not going to, it's not going to be effective, right? So but once it hits by 8.30 at night, we want those parking lights to come on so that it can illuminate uh, the, um, the, the parking lot so that we can see uh, as we're walking uh, to our cars. And so... Uh, we need light, not in light, but we need light in darkness, all right? And that's where the prophet Isaiah is getting at because he's, he's writing and he's uh, proclaiming uh, uh, a prophetic word from God in the midst of a world of darkness. And what he's saying is that they've got to be, we have to have some servants of God, uh, some servants that would serve God and serve people and help people uh, in the midst of darkness, all right? Um, you know, when people need help, we need to help them, right? Bring them closer to, to Christ, if you will. And so when we look at when he's writing, he's writing at a time where there is division uh, within, the, um, uh, uh, within the nation of Israel. And we talked about this the, uh, last week. The prophet Ezekiel speaks on the same matter uh, where uh, the children of Israel have been divided uh, the Babylonians have come in and have have uh, have held have held them captive, um, and so there's this northern um, region uh, kingdom, if you will. And then there's a southern kingdom, um, and uh, the people of God have been separated, uh, and so uh, there's this division amongst uh, the believers, and so uh, the, now not only has Ezekiel addressed the division. Uh, and caused them in Ezekiel books from last week, he caused them to come together as one body, uh, one, one body in Christ, if you will. But now the prophet um, uh, Isaiah is speaking uh, to cause servants um, of the Lord. And so as, as the people of God are separated, he's calling for servants to, to, to serve the Lord by bringing the people of God together. All right. And so that's part of of, of, of being a servant of God is not we're not dividing folks, but we're bringing people uh, together. All right. So um, when we now let's look at our lesson outline because our lesson outline uh, demonstrates this. And so when we look at um, Isaiah um, chapter forty nine verses one to four, it's dealing with the Messiah, we're dealing with Christ again. Christ has not come yet, but he's he's talking about a deliverer. And so this servant of the Lord. So when, you, when we read this, one may think that the servant is uh, Isaiah. Well, Isaiah is a servant. He's called by God. 
and uh, and he's writing about that as well. But he's really talking about when he when he talks about this um, this servant of the Lord, he's talking about the Lord sending a servant, and this servant that he's referring to is the Messiah, is Christ. All right, and what better example to know uh, of how we um, how we ought to be a servant of God by having this example of Christ uh, to come, all right? And so uh, the servant of the Messiah, verses 1 through 4, let's look at that. Those that have your Sunday school um, books, um, you, can, um, you can read along uh, with me. But I'm on page 151. I just want to uh, look at a couple of things and um, make mention of them in, this, in, in, in the lesson outline. And so one of the things in verses 1 and 2, it says uh, the call of the servant of the Lord. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that this morning in the, in the sermon. Uh, but uh, there is a call from, uh, from God. So we don't become servants of God until the Lord really calls us to serve. Right? He gives us a ministry. He gives us an assignment. He gives us a passion uh, to want to do something um, that, uh, that, gives him, uh, that gives him glory. And so verse 1 where it says that, um, well, the... The prophet said, listen to me, you islands. Listen to me here, uh, you distant nations. Again, hear the division. He says, listen to me, you islands. Okay? And everyone know about an island. Usually an island uh, has, um, is, is surrounded, by, uh, surrounded by water, so, which means that it's separate from everything. All right? Uh, and so he said, listen to me, you islands. Everyone who's, who has divided yourself and you're separate from everything else. And something has separated you. So when you look at an island, water separates um, land from land, all right? And when you, when, you, when you push that away, there's more bodies of water surrounding uh, a piece of land that we consider that uh, an island, right? And so it stands off by itself. And then he says, hear this, right? So in verse 1, you distant nations, okay? Again, hear the division uh, in the text. Then he goes on, before I was born, the Lord called me. Right, so here's that call uh, that we're talking about here. And so what I'm submitting to us is, is that, that we become servants of God again when God calls us. And God calls us before, according to this text, before we were born. It says, before I was born. Now, we've heard that kind of language before, right? We've heard that kind of language. Um, and, and if I had you uh, in front of me, uh, I, would, I would question you. Uh, give you actually the question and have you to um, to give me the answer. But if you look at Jeremiah, uh, the book of Jeremiah, and uh, chapter one, we talk about the call of Jeremiah, right? And so, if you look at Jeremiah chapter one, verse nine. Then the Lord reached out His hand and touched my mouth and said to me, "Now I have put the words uh, in in your mouth," right? Um, but here again, uh, but if you look at verse 5, go up to verse 4, rather. The word of the Lord came to me, this is Jeremiah, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you a prophet to the nations. Okay? And so here is another example in Isaiah where Isaiah said, Before I was born, the Lord called me. So therefore, it's this essence of God knowing who we are and God knowing what, uh, what gifts he's going to put in us, how he's going to use us before we were even conceived in the womb of our mother, okay? Uh, and that's kind of awesome, right, God, that God can, can, can foresee uh, before time um, and then what he has foreseen before time, it becomes, when we come in time, he begins to activate what he had, uh, with, what he had envisioned before we were even born, um, and so um, as we even go through life, right? Um, and sometimes we don't always do what the Lord has called us to do, or do the will of God. But somehow, when we get off track, God gets us back on track, right? Uh, and so here in this text, we have this calling that uh, Isaiah uh, experiences. Um, and then he says, and he made my mouth like a sharpened sword, okay? Um, and, he made me in, uh, and he made me into a polished arrow and concealed me uh, in, his, uh, in his quiver. So as God has formed us and made us 
He also, God, protects us, all right? Um, and so this servant of the Lord, which we're talking about the Messiah, right? We're talking about the Christ, um, that even Christ uh, is, is, uh, is born. Uh, he's called before he's born, right? Which is very interesting because when we look at that, we look at who his father is, right? Which is, which is God. And so God uh, and the Holy Spirit um, had uh, utilized um, uh, flesh, which we call Mary, and impregnated Mary with, through his Holy Spirit, and Jesus began to uh, become flesh through the womb. Um, and so even at that, we think about uh, that Christ was thought about before he was even conceived. God had to think about, how am I going to save this world? How am I going to give salvation to a world that's divided, to a people that is divided and divided uh, on, on the principles of of, of idolatry, um, principles of, um, of listening and 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 and, and uh, pulling on false prophets um, and and false doctrine. Uh, I have to send somebody to save my people. And so, uh, but but before God has created uh, humanity and created uh, the earth um, and created all things, He already knew who He had to send to uh to uh to deliver his people right and so here it is here is a servant christ becomes the servant of the lord he becomes a servant of his father even before he was even born all right that's exciting news i'm getting excited all right okay and so let's look at um let's look at the um the messiah as the savior of all people so that's verses um, verses 5 to 10. All right, so we're looking at the, the Messiah um, as the Savior um, of all people. So we look at verse 5. It says, And now saith the Lord uh, that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him. Through Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength and he said it is it is a light it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribe of jacob but to restore the or to, uh, preserve of israel i will give i will also give thee for a light to the gentiles that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end um, of the earth all right so here this Messiah, this Christ, who is now being the uh, the Savior, the Deliverer, uh, for not just one particular group, but for everybody. Now, you mentioned Jacob. Now, remember I said to you before, that's why we went, went and did the, the 12 tribes, because Jacob was uh, the father um, of um, the Reuben and Simon and, and, and Levi, all right? So these are, these are his sons. And so... Um, and so here we have um, the, the children of Israel, um, and speaking of Jacob, Jacob's name was, was changed at some point, right? It was changed from Jacob to Israel. Why? Because Jacob represents Israel, represents all the tribes. He's the father of uh, the, 12, uh, the 12 tribes, uh, father of Israel. And so here, um, the, the prophet Isaiah is indicating that uh, that through Israel, because they're not gathered, they're separated, right? Jacob, we gotta we gotta pull the people together. We gotta pull uh, the tribes together. We gotta pull your sons together uh, and their families together. And he says in verse six, and uh, and not just pull them together, but he also also told me he says, and we got to restore and preserve Israel. So Israel has been under attack. Israel has been the tribes have been. Um, uh, have been, particularly last week we talk about Judah, right? So Judah uh, was under captivity, and so, and they were separated. Now, anytime, and I, let, me, let me say this, um, it, kings in those times took over kingdoms. And so, and part of taking over kingdoms is you had to train up and raise up um, men to be warriors to be able to take over a kingdom. And once you take over that kingdom, you become more powerful. 
And so the, the Israelites didn't even re didn't realize how powerful they are as a people. Um, the Israelites, the people of God, um, that these were God's chosen people. Not only were they powerful because of the numbers, and even as they became um, uh, destroyed and they were, they were they, they, wars were going on to destroy them, um, to, uh, to hold them captive and separate them. If I can get you separated, then I can diminish your power. Yeah? And see, nothing has changed over the years. The same thing that applies today. If we can ever get a people to be divided, we can never be a powerful force. We were powerful when we come together. And I'll make this other point to that, um, make it more relevant today. When we think about even when um, we elected our first black president, right? Uh, no one never thought in a million years that we'll ever have a black president to serve as a president of the United States. But that happened because there was a people that came together. And it wasn't just all black. There were white folks in there too. But the point I'm making is there were people who came together. And our folks, folks that have not voted in years, um, folks that may not were even registered became registered. Why? Because uh, they were, uh, they, there was a goal in mind. All right. Uh, and so the point I'm making is that when a people come together, there is strength, there is power. Uh, and that's what the prophet Isaiah was trying to demonstrate um, in this, uh, in this text. Uh, so he said, when the Messiah comes, he's going to be for all people, not for just the Jews, but also Gentiles. Not just only the Gentiles, but also for Jacob, Israel, all the 12 tribes, okay? Uh, the last piece of that is Messiah um, um, bringing, bringing a peace, and that's in, uh, in, that's in verse 22. And so it says, and then the sovereign Lord says, See, if I beckon to the Gentiles, I will lift up my banner to the people, right? Uh, then, and this banner is this, that the whole uh, banner of peace, if you will. I'm going to lift up my banner to the people, and they will bring their sons in their arms and carry your, your daughters uh, on your shoulders. So that, that's a, that is a, a sign of, of peace, Okay. And so when you bring your sons and bring your daughters, um, uh, it's, it, it's a time where we're coming together and there'll be no war, there'll be no fighting, there'll be no uh, disagreement, if you will, uh, but we'll be on one accord in one place. Uh, and so the Messiah, Christ, will be able to do that. He'll, he'll give peace. He'll give peace to the nation. He'll give peace to the land. All right. Uh, and so uh, when we talk about being a light for the Gentiles, uh, the prophet is saying that we need a servant that will demonstrate um, uh, this uh, this deliverance for all people and and this peace being given and bringing the people of God together um, uh, in one place uh, with one mindset. And so, what I would uh, suggest um, as we close with this uh, piece, and we'll and I'll say more about this in our in our service this morning in the sermon. Uh, but think about, are, the question really is, are we a light for the Gentiles today? Are we a light for those who are in darkness? What is the church doing? Is the church a beacon of light, right? Or are we just sitting on a corner, right? Uh, are, we, are we sharing the resources that God has blessed us with to be a blessing to someone else who is living in darkness that they can see the light? And when, when I'm talking about darkness, it's not just also dealing with the spirituality piece as far as um, uh, one not being saved. Uh, that is certainly one aspect of it. But the other aspect of being in darkness is uh, not knowing the truth or living in the falsehood um, and uh, following uh, uh, traditions or things that are not in the will of God. Um, and so God sends a servant. God sends uh, in this text, Isaiah says, the Messiah to be able to deliver us all uh, from whatever background uh, that we come from. All right. Uh, let's put a pause uh, there. Uh, there. Let me give you an assignment for this week. 
and, uh, and then we're going to move into our um, our worship experience this morning and uh, at 11. So what I would um, encourage you to do this week for research is, since we're in the book of Isaiah, like we did last week, let's look at um, researching on uh, who Isaiah is. So I want you to take some time this week. Um, you can go through uh, the uh, the chapters of Isaiah to pull out some things, uh, or you can also go to Google and you can look up um, on some websites and, and research um, Isaiah. So do a research on Isaiah, the prophet. And then second piece of that is, um, how would a servant of the Lord um, demonstrate his or, her, his or her faith today? So that's the question. So the question is, how would a servant of the Lord demonstrate his or her faith today? All right. And so again, uh, number one is um, research on Isaiah. And the second piece is to do a little brainstorming and, and reflection on um, how would a servant of the Lord demonstrate his or her faith in today's times, in today's world. All right, let us pray. Turn God, we thank you for this moment that we've shared together in your word. God, we thank you for allowing us to be the light. But God, most of all, thank you for sending your son, Jesus the Christ, who is the light and is the light of the world. We thank you for him coming, O oh Lord, and shedding his light upon us all darkness. And God, we ask that you would continue to bless us as we continue to be the demonstration of that light in today's world. Now, God, bless those that are viewing and those that were on this uh, telephone line, conference line. And God, whatever they stand in need of, God, we pray that you would meet every need this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. So we'll see you um, next week at the same time at 10 o'clock for a Bible study. And um, those that are going to be viewing, we encourage you to invite someone to view in on our 11 o'clock service. God bless you.